She's stranded, hurt, and coming to get you. Tomb Raider The Definitive Edition. So Tomb Raider was a game released in 2013 by Square Enix and it was on the PC, PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and now we have it on the next gen. I played the PlayStation 4 version and firstly I have to commend the graphics, they look absolutely insane. If you're somebody that loves graphics then the eye candy in this game is going to be right up your alley. Another positive is this game comes with all the DLC. The version I bought came with a special booklet with artwork from the developers which is quite kind of cool as well. Very enjoyable and very good to see. This is what my version looks like, so if you're into this sort of thing, this will be right up your alley as well. Additionally, it comes with a digital comic book called Tomb Raider The Beginning, new comic book series on the Tomb Raider franchise, and it acts as a prequel to the video game. Basically, it gives you an insight into the backstories of the different characters on the game. Some of them are secondary characters, some of them are primary characters, like Lara herself. While we're on the story of characters, even though the story is really, really strong, I do think some of the secondary characters do fall a little bit short in the grand scheme of things. Apart from Sam, who is Lara's best friend in the game, and Roth, who is like a father figure to her, the rest of the characters don't have much relevance at all. I think that some of the characters could have been used better, perhaps have them in some of the missions with Lara as well. Maybe something like Joel and Ellie in The Last of Us, even though I am aware that this is Tomb Raider and is Lara Croft and it isn't that kind of game, it still would have been nice to have had them more involved. Most of the time you had the characters on the island and they were just moaning, looking at Lara, saying, do this, do that, and I just felt like, ugh. You know, it could have been utilised a little bit better. Speaking of Lara, she is totally badass. She goes from this scared little girl to being... Die, you bastards! I loved her transition from being that scared girl to being a total badass. I just think that it went a little bit too quickly. I played about 30, 40, 50 minutes into the game and she was cowering behind cover, questioning the motives of the different characters. Th you know, going like, why are they doing this? What are, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? And then... All of a sudden she was running out with a bow and arrow chasing them down going, Die you bastards, die! So it was great but it went a little bit too quick for my liking. I just think it could have slowed it down a little bit and it would have fitted it in much better than what it had. Another thing I should touch upon is the music. The music in this game is fantastic, it's atmospheric, it hits the nail on the head and there was never a moment in the game where I was playing in a certain level and I kept thinking, nope this is not a place. Everything flowed nicely with the music and every piece of music fitted right into place no matter what the scenario was. Also in my definitive edition case there was this free uh, card by here, free card. <laughs> Basically it's for 10 tracks in the game so as I'm saying about the music now is very good. You can put the code in onto this website, download 10 of the free tracks, put it on your iPod, get that shit going, rock it out, very good stuff. I did try out the multiplayer but I wasn't too fussed on it. Tomb Raider's never really been about the multiplayer, it's all about the single player. Whenever I did play multiplayer in this game, I just kept thinking, oh, I want to get back to playing Lara's story. The story is much, 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 much more gratifying than the multiplayer. So multiplayer, if you're looking for a good multiplayer experience, there are much better games out there than Tomb Raider. However, conclusion time. Overall, I would give this game a rating of full price. For what you get included and for the upgraded graphics, this definitely is the definitive edition for Tomb Raider. However, I would stress that you wait for it to come down in price. I think full price for a remastered game, which has already been released for a year, can be a bit too much. However, I was looking in the stores the other day in my local superstore, and I found the definitive edition Tomb Raider game on PlayStation 4 for £29, which is an absolute bargain. You get all the DLC, you get the facelift for the graphics, you get the music, you get artwork that I showed you earlier, you know, you get quite a bit for what you got. The only thing I would say with the DLC, I think it adds one, maybe two new tombs, which isn't an awful lot. The game doesn't have many to begin with. It's a little bit like Grand Theft Auto where everyone loves the heist missions, there's only like six or seven in the game. I think it's the same with Tomb Raider, it's only, one, it's only probably four, five, six tombs altogether. Anyways, I've been Dragonheart reviewing Tomb Raider, the definitive edition. I hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review of Tomb Raider. If you're interested in watching more reviews on my channel, links are below to my review channel where I'll be doing lots and lots of reviews, previews, gamer talk, movies, television series, everything you can think of will be all on that channel in the coming weeks. So get on to the button down below, click the subscribe button and check it out. Thank you for watching and goodbye.